Um, good morning, everybody. Thank you for coming and thank you for actually making the effort to come out of bed. Um, and uh, to me, this seems like a snuggling weather. So thank you for actually being here and joining us on this second day. Uh, without further ado, due to the time constraint, I would like to introduce Charles Liu from XCOR Technology. Um, I've heard, I came across XCOR a few years ago, actually, and I think it's quite, um, are doing a very interesting stuff. And I think um, hopefully we could get something out of this, each one of us, um, out of the um, Charles's talk. And the floor is yours, Charles. Okay. Hello, hello. Thank you. Uh, well, first of all, thank you, uh, XJLTU, for giving me this opportunity. And thank you, David and Mia, for running this excellent program. Um, actually, it's very my honor today to speak along with Neil. Uh, <laughs> I, uh, 20 years ago, I was a student at SciArc, and then Neil gave a lecture on parametric and then the future of architecture. I still recall that was like a very eye open experience for me. So uh, it's truly an honor. Uh, before I go into my sharing, I just want to give you a brief background of X School technology. Um, so we started back in 2016, uh, six partners, three of them are architects, three are uh, technology IT background. So the idea was very simple in the beginning, we're all architect. The work is very long hours, a lot of repet, uh, uh, you know, uh, repet, uh, re repetitions, tedious work, and then really long hours. So the our initial thought was, why can we not use machine to help us uh, in our daily works? And then thus we can free up a lot of time and then start doing more creative works. But then later on, we realized, you know, there's a bigger problem in this industry is because every discipline is working in silos, right? So the architect is looking after design, uh, not the, you know, the construction costs, the delivery, uh, general contractor, general contractor is every, every day thinking about the program schedule cost, but then not about the design and then the, the overall delivery quality. And then you also have uh, different vendors, uh, manufacturers, right? So no one is really looking after the whole picture. So, um, and then we're thinking, you know, whether is there a solution in today's world that can solve this problem? And then the answer is not really. So that's why we started XCOOL Technology. Um, just that other story, um, Wan Yu, the CEO, uh, also founder, and myself, we're working in uh, OMA, uh, if you guys know a Dutch architectural firm, uh, in Hong Kong. So uh, this is 2016-15, uh, and then we're working in central near Lang Kui Fang, right? So every Friday night, we have to work like till one, two in the mor morning, cutting models, doing like massing studies. And then under us, there's the, you know, the, the nightlife scene, bars, <laughs> uh, you know, different people who dress really nicely and then go into the club. I was like, well, man, this is really sucks. We really need to do something. So, so the, and then when you, yeah, we started uh, X school te technology actually. So uh, over the last seven years, we really uh, look into how combine AI and architecture. We publish a lot of uh, articles uh, in different journals and also uh, on the very far right, uh, this is actually a book we published along with Tongji University. It's called the uh, AI uh, Architect's Guide to AI. Uh, it's actually, uh, we think it's the first uh, book that really talk about AI application in the field of architecture. So there's actually a, a standard uh, in term of uh, um, smart uh, principles. Uh, if you can see here from L1 to L5, just like uh, you know the electronic uh, EV, you know ele electrical vehicle. Uh, L L1 is basically the the physical file, and then we move along to L2, which is uh, digital, you know CAD, PDF, 
And then elsewhere is really the machine uh, readable file, um, CAD, and then to L4, uh, which we call BIM, right? Building Information Modeling. Uh, so this is basically a machine readable content. So from uh, a model, and then we add a second dimension, which is data, right? So for, for the first time, you can control the content, not just you know doing like objects, but you can, for example, the doors dimension, the windows dimension, you can change uh, based on the numbers, and then the ob the object will change accordingly. And then what we're trying to achieve is what we think is called the L5 uh, uh, level of uh, data format, which is uh, machine interactive. And this is, I think, the only way we think we can basically connect uh, the whole industrial train from upper stream to downstream. You know, we, we need a metadata that can connect everything together and then achieve that uh, interaction with machine. So I can explain to you why uh, we call uh, data model and rules. Um, I mean, data model, very easy to understand rule. Uh, we're trying to implement national, local zoning codes, production logic, um, uh, business logic, uh, uh, corporation business operation, industrial knowledge, et cetera, et cetera. So the idea is that uh, the machine can look at this three dimension or aspect co uh, uh, comprehensively and then start to generate uh, contents. So the major difference between our predecessor, uh, whether it's Autodesk or, or you know, Revit, Bunny, uh, et cetera, is that the, the first two is still would require architects to draw things manually. And what we're trying to achieve is uh, the machine generate content automatically, while uh, the architect uh, or clients sitting on the driver's seat and make decisions. So the, the first two we think is still in the category of graphic driven. And what we're trying to achieve is data driven. So with data, you can then connect with uh, what, what we call the upper stream and lower stream of this industrial train, uh, whether that's you know the feasibility study, architectural design, uh, project management, uh, general con construction delivery, and then also uh, as well as your uh, you know vendors and the manufacturers. So I just want to give you a uh, background of our journey since 2016 and 17. So uh, 2017, we started looking at uh, CNN and then using uh, convolutional uh, neural network to look at master planning. So back then, China was doing a lot of rapid development in the real estate domain, right? So we're working with uh, different developers uh, up you know, uh, developer like uh, Banky, uh, Evergrande, you know, all those people that are currently in trouble <laughs> at the moment. So for example, you know, uh, one of our investors, Gamdell, they're looking at almost 2,000, 3,000 lands uh, a, a year. Uh, conventional way of doing it is they hire an architect, a, a executive or local architect. They come up with a feasibility study and then uh, with that feasibility study, they uh, connect with their financial model and then calculate, you know, the uh, the ROI, the return on investment, the IRR, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, how we do it is we basically extract all the national and local code and then put that into the machine in the system. So with basic uh, inputs such as your intended GFA, FAR, your uh, your your uh, building density, high restriction. The machine will just generate different feasibility studies, and then from there we automatically connect with uh, developers' uh, financial model. So it will calculate uh, those uh, financial data that which is required for the developer to make decision whether they want to acquire this land, and then if so, how much they should pay for the land, right? Uh, so this is a really a, a new way of doing it. Uh, traditionally, uh, that particular task would take you one to two weeks, uh, depends on the skill of the architect or the experience of the architect. And uh, a lot of time there's many errors in between. But with this new approach, uh, one to two days, and it's a lot more accurate. 
And then in 2018, 2019, we started looking at uh, GANs, uh, Generative Versal Network. Uh, this is a, a exhibition we did in uh, Venice Biennale. Uh, it's called a architecture that doesn't exist in the real world. So we basically train computer, uh, you know, what is a contemporary style architecture, right? Uh, there's no excessive decoration, et cetera, et cetera. And then machine with the parameter we gave to the machine and the machine will just generate content. Uh, so within a couple of minutes, it can generate uh, this kind of facade design, hundreds and thousands. Uh, so again, we think in the, in the near future, uh, probably architect or, or, or client are basically in the, uh, the driver's seat. Uh, so all they need to make is decision, but then the, the production and then what we call the more tedious work can be done by a machine. And then in 2019, 2020, we're looking at um, we call image to image. So on the left, you can imagine an architect draw some random line, and then on the right, there's a live simulator which can um, uh, maybe. Uh, mim mimic uh, like a, a a a almost like an image with texture, uh, color, etc. So for an architect, it's very easy to recognize that image. You know whether if you draw a box, whether that's uh, the building profile, the windows, or the doors, right? Uh, architect or human is easy to distinguish that. But then uh, for machine, that that's quite difficult. So this is what we do for the, actually the last uh, six years. Uh, we, we train a lot of data and then feed into the machine and then allow machine to read uh, this two-dimensional uh, graphic data. In 2020 and 2021, we started looking at from image to model. So on the left, you see some like random line. And then from that, we convert that to 2D uh, images and then from 2D image to 3D modeling. And an application to that is uh, we call AI plan check. So again, we work with different architects uh, or sorry, developers uh, in China uh, for the last five or six years. So for example, a company like uh, China overseas, they they you know they they don't care about the, all the national and local regulation and zoning. What they care is ten regulations that are. Uh, very price driven or price uh, uh, associated. So basically, once they upload their uh, design or, or their their drawing construction drawing to our system, we just look that particular ten or twelve uh, regulation uh, for them. So it's everything is automatic. The machine will detect that drawings and then uh, trigger uh, alerts and then tell you. Uh, which one meets requirement, which is not, and then we give recommendation of how to make such revisions. And then from 21 or 22, which is last, last year, we started looking at uh, text to image. Obviously, this is when uh, Mid Journey also just started. So uh, instantly we gained a lot of uh, uh, attraction on the uh, internet. Uh, so here on the right, you can see an example with basically with a description of a villa by Zaha Hadi. And then this is uh, something that can generate our platform. So I'm just going to show you a, uh, actually, uh, yeah, two of our, our products uh, based on some of the, uh, uh, the technology that we, we developed over the years. So this is the uh, the master planning feasibility study uh, platform. So basically, again, if you put in different numbers, uh, your prescribed index, and then the machine will generate different uh, uh, master planning based on the, the layout. We, we have a, basically a layout library of, uh, uh, at the moment, it's almost 2 million uh, residential layout. And from there, we can just generate this kind of uh, master planning. And then on the right, we connect with uh, different developers financial model, and then we start to doing all kind of calculations for them. So uh, the, the machine will generate everything automatically, but then the human can also intervene uh, manually. So uh, for example, if there's 
uh, sometimes we our our system is not updated uh, as fast as some of the the local zoning regulation is updating. So uh, you can basically alter things manually as well. And then for building design, basically we can do something like this: uh, just bubble diagram. You put a bubble diagram to differentiate different uh, area in a in a, in a home. And then the machine will just generate the, the room layout. And then we also have a library of fixture furniture. So you basically drag in and then uh, instantly you'll have this uh, uh, the, the floor layout uh, for your projects. And then we'll also have a simulation tools that can assess uh, you know, the sound light, uh, your, your, your room depths, uh, widths, whether that's appropriate, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's also, you can basically collaborate on a iPad, uh, your mobile, uh, different stakeholder can make uh, modification comments uh, on that platform to achieve uh, collaboration. And the other, um, yeah, this is a, a other platform that we launched uh, July, in July, uh, it's called LookX. <laughs> Sorry, I don't know how to turn turn on the volume. Okay. Um, yep. So it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. So this is launched uh, back in July, and then now we have over uh, eighty thousand uh, user around the world. So it's subscription based. Um, basically, we have a platform that you can it's prompt driven. Uh, you can enter text like this, and then the or, or image reference the image, and then the machine will generate um, uh, design intents for you. So we have this what we call smart label system. Basically, uh, you put in some keywords and then the machine will automatically uh, give you uh, different uh, words or, or prompts that are, are uh, related to the, the keywords that you enter. So I think the video is pretty uh, self-explanatory, um, different kind of style, uh, whether that's a realistic image or a image of uh, schoolwork. We have this, uh, we call Laura model, which is a small model that we train for different style, uh, uh, scenarios, uh, materials. Uh, so example, for example, if uh, architect like Zaha Hadid, she or they, they have their unique style, right? So they don't want to generate something randomly. So if we work with them, they can use our system to generate style that are specific specific for, for Zaha Hadi, you know. So also you can basically upload images, a uh, different kind of reference image. For example, if someone with no design background, they, they, they cannot explain the type of uh, design style that they're looking for, they can, but they understand what they see on Google or, or Pinterest that they like, so they can upload that image along with something like a hand sketch, a, a building profile, and then it will just generate image uh, combining the, 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 the two. So I, I really wish when I work for OMA, we have something like this, so it can save me some time. Also for interior design, it's actually quite useful. You take a picture of, uh, uh, on furnished uh, room, and then with some design, you can basically test really quickly the, the type of style or design intent that you want. And this actually is a, a function that we think is very unique. Uh, basically, you can make uh, editing uh, on the platform. So if uh, once the machine generates this image, if you don't like this particular facade, you can just 
it reads with our smart eraser and then uh, the machine can generate just that particular facade, but then leave the, the everything as it as it is. Or you know, if you don't like you don't like this whole uh, wind of the building, you can change the shape, uh, materials, and everything. Yeah. So that's the. Basically, the machine. Oh, now we also have a, a toolbox uh, that can basically implement this into our, our daily work process. So we have a Rhino and SketchUp plugins, plugins. So basically, you can have your Rhino or SketchUp open uh, along with this plugin, and then you can everything smart label, very in, uh, easy and um, uh, uh, user friendly, and then you can generate uh, different kind of design intent. So here's our some of the design that's generated from the uh, Lucax platform. It also allow uh, 1080p downloads so high quality images. Yeah. So basically, uh, what I gave to you earlier is the the software side of what we do, and then now I want to show you some of the like the. Uh, we call consultancy or, or basically uh, tailor-made solution for different clients uh, over the past uh, seven or eight years that we did in China. Uh, so basically AI can do as this four task uh, we call classification, evaluation, reconstruction, and generation. Uh, so now the example you see will incorporate those four tasks so we uh, at school have a, a, a data team. So in China, the advantage is that we have a lot of big data, right? Uh, developer, they gather uh, purchasing data, user data, and then whenever you walk into a facility, you log on to Wi-Fi, and then you have different kind of uh, 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 movement data, et cetera. And then we also, in the public domain, we can uh, get a lot of data. So with that data, we help a uh, developer to do all kinds of feasibility, uh, feasibility study uh, before the, the actual uh, design stage, uh, whether that's you know traffic related, uh, uh, user profile, you know, uh, financial feasibility, et cetera, et cetera. This is a project actually we did in Xiongan. Uh, if you know the area, this is a, uh, uh, an hour drive away from Beijing uh, is the almost what we call the uh, uh, the new capital of of China is actually uh, Xi Jinping's the, the you know the grand grand vision a, a new master plan city. So what we did uh, in this particular exercise is uh, when uh, the designer to actually after they finished the master planning. Uh, and then uh, people, the high high rank government official, they want to see some physical building or or, or urban design. Uh, human is actually not quick enough to respond to that kind of a demand. So we basically uh, programmed the whole city uh, based on the designer's uh, uh, master plan uh, data, like you know the the GFA, FAR uh, setback, and then the machine will generate things uh, automatically. So he, uh, they can look, uh, see whether uh, that kind of design match their overall uh, intent. But now actually the Xi'an government is using this as a dynamic uh, uh, zoning uh, monitor system. So what happens is uh, once you have the, the whole master plan and then as each plot is developing, uh, sooner or later you'll actually deviate from the original master plan because the GFA could change, the FAR could change, setback could change. Uh, so slowly um, they will lose track of you know the, the, the initial master plan. So what happened here, what you just saw is once uh, a plot GFA or FAR or, or whatever change, and then all the surrounding building fabric will change accord accordingly to match the initial master planning uh, prescriptive index. So along the way, the government has a, a very holistic view of the, the development progress and then how they could uh, align with the, the original master planning. 
this is a project in Chongqing. Uh, so the government is actually is a 16 plots uh, urban regeneration project. The government is looking for the highest, uh, uh, how do you say, the sellable uh, commercial area. So this is basically all just uh, office and retail. So uh, our program are basically tell computer, you know, the, the uh, development logic along with the, the zoning code in this region. Uh, what, 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 sh what is the, the design envelope uh, for each plot? And then machine would just calculate uh, thousands of times and then provide a couple design option for the government to choose. Uh, and then government actually they can combine different criteria. Uh, so for this case, they're looking for the the highest uh, for sellable uh, area. But you can also say, oh, I want something like the highest GFA, but with the lowest uh, building density or highest GFA with the most uh, green 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 ratio, you know, et cetera, et cetera. And then the machine can just look at different uh, parameters and then come up with the best and ideal scenario. This is a project we did in Shoko, Shenzhen. So on the left is the Shoko port existing condition. So with the, the ocean flow and then the current, I actually carry a lot of uh, trash and then flowing object into the port. One, it doesn't look uh, nicely uh, from, a, uh, from a, a city image perspective. And then secondly, it actually disrupt a lot of the ongoing uh, traffic uh, in the port. So on the right, we basically did a simulation of this ocean current and then how it flows. And then from there, we redesigned the, the, the land profile. Uh, and then uh, from there, we intervened the ocean flow so that the, the water will carry the, the flowing object into one or two single uh, locations. And then uh, people or workers uh, public workers can uh, recycle those uh, objects more efficiently. And then at the same time, we design a more water-friendly uh, waterfront for the city. Uh, so this is actually a project we won over international competition two years ago. Yeah. Uh, another example, uh, architectural scale, uh, this is in Luohu in Shenzhen as well. Uh, in a very uh, conditional and dense neighborhood. So you have a very large and massive building that basically block uh, sunlight, uh, you know, your visual access to the entire city. So what happens are when the architect look at this product, they come up with uh, this five criteria, which we think is the most crucial or important for this particular project. It's just something like when we, work for OIMA, this, this is kind of a exercise we do every day, right? So we look at for each individual project, which which criteria is the most important and we come up with a design solution to, to uh, resolve that. So uh, for this particular project, we think, you know, ground publicity, uh, interface, interaction, public circulation, uh, structural visibility, and then uh, whether this is uh, changeable over, uh, over time. So with those five criteria, we let machine to search for possibility. And then uh, the machine will come up with different proposal. And then the architect will select one single massing that we think is both uh, feasible in term in term of uh, you know without those condition, but also um, aesthetically uh, ap appealing. And then architect can look at the interior circulation facade design. So here you can see we're, we're we're not saying the machine will replace human. At least I think in the the very near future it, this won't happen. But it's more like a collaborative way. Uh, so machine has their its advantage of doing things. Uh, for example, search for uh, possibility or scenario under complex uh, design parameters, but then humans are more better in you know creative things, and then uh, 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 yeah, so it, it's really a, a combination of, of the two. This is actually a, a build project in Shenzhen as well. Um, it, it's also a um, urban infill. So very large project, almost over 400,000 square meter is a uh, office building. Uh, so when we 
work or design on this project, we actually put sensor in the existing plots and then look at the uh, incoming, outgoing, and then uh, trespassing traffics. And then from there, we design the, uh, the, the building core and then also the, the public circulations uh, in this project. This is a, a almost 6.0 uh, FAR project, even in the very dense Shenzhen city is still kind of massive. So initially we want to generate a building massing that incorporate a lot of uh, open space and green space. So we basically wrote a algorithm and then let machine look for ideal form and then building uh, designs. So this is actually uh, the, the final completed project. So you can see from a bird eye view, there's a lot of uh, public space at different level of this project from uh, ground level, uh, patio, roof level, uh, also uh, on this uh, 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 building. So every three or five sto uh, story floors, there is a public space inject uh, into the, the physical uh, domain. So this is right now is actually the highest rent building. Uh, the we 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 Chad Bank or Tencent Bank is actually located. Uh, the headquarters is located in this building as well. This is at the podium level. So even with six point uh, GFA, you can see it's actually still you can create a lot of generate uh, generous public space. Um, yeah, this is another uh, example of uh, sustainability design, sustainable design. Uh, this is in uh, Chonglai. Chonglai is an hour drive of uh, Chengdu. So the local government hosts an international competition. They're searching for carbon neutral uh, design. Uh, we find a ancient painting of the area. Uh, you can see it's a very nice uh, area. There's like mountain on the back along with a lot of green space. And then there's also water uh, river flowing in front of the, the site. So traditional way of design is we architect come up with a design and then we put into a different kind of software like Ecotech and then search, look for the assessment and then see whether that building is uh, uh, sustainable uh, in different criteria. However, that result would not have a possible a possible fee, uh, 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 feedback to the to the architect, right? So that that design process is really like segregated and isolated. Uh, what we do here is we actually extract uh, criteria that is crucial to this project. For example, your your visual circulation to the mountain behind. Uh, if you leave enough space or or generous space for the pedestrian to access the waterfront. Uh, the heat gain, heat loss of the building, uh, whether the building provide enough sunshade for the pedestrian. So here you can see the machine based on those criteria are uh, we call forwardly, right? It's, it's not a reverse design, but forwardly thinking of the design and then search for the ideal uh, shape, massing, and then building orientation. Uh, whether you know also that's uh, the the wind flow and the microclimate that's also something we look at for this building. So that's in terms of uh, master planning scale, and then yeah, in terms of human scale. So we also draw a radius of uh, two hundred meter uh, walking distance. And then uh, we start looking at how building interact with the human, the pedestrian, whether the building provide enough sun, sunshade, and then also whether the public uh, uh, furniture is, is located in the, the suitable area. So with those two simulation combined or overlay, we then finally secure a, uh, a building uh, massing or, or profile. And then architect come in to look at the facade design and the interior design. So uh, traditional way, you can never prove whether that building is the ideal scenario in terms of uh, carbon neutral or sustainable uh, design. But this, this approach, the forward approach, basically confirm uh, what the, the, the client or the developer is looking for. 
And then uh, during the construction drawing stage, we're actually looking at how to make this project more feasible. So originally we consult with Gary Tech, uh, Frank Gary uh, and their, their team. And then they told us uh, it will require 115 uh, different shape of tiles to achieve this uh, double curvature uh, organic shape. But it, with computer, we actually uh, also perform millions of round of uh, uh, simulation and we're able to minimize to just 12. So this actually not only increase uh, uh, overall delivery feasibility, but also reduce uh, costs uh, significantly for the, for the client. Other thing we look at in China is uh, industrial, uh, industrial park. We work with, at the moment, Prologis, uh, Goodman. Uh, th those are some of the world's largest uh, logistic uh, operator. So basically, with different criteria, we're helping them to look for feasibility. And this is not just, uh, I mean, here the simulation just show you the, the master planning scale, but we're, we're able to pinpoint down to uh, individual racks, you know, how, how to generate the whole thing based on the most rack that we can achieve, and then the most uh, storage we can hold in that space. And then from, from actually, this is from inside to outside, and then look at the, the building efficiency uh, in, in master planning. And then with urban uh, regeneration, we also look at a lot of uh, uh, building simulation. So we can upload a project like this, uh, a residential community, very typical in China. And then there's um, certain things that we can check using our system, whether you know that's the sunlight access, uh, uh, visual access, uh, your, your uh, depths with your uh, proximity to the nearest elevator, you know, for seniors. And then the, the machine will just highlight a uh, particular individual unit that are doesn't meet those uh, requirements or, or not perform well in those uh, criteria, and then we'll highlight it. And then uh, developer or operator, they can know exactly which one that they can use uh, acupuncture approach uh, to look at the uh, uh, redesign or renovation. The other thing uh, machine is really good is like for parking layout design. You know, uh, when I was a student, uh, I, I still remember my first internship, I did the San Francisco airport's uh, bathroom design. So over that summer, I designed almost like, almost a hundred bathrooms, right? Just draw this, but then it's really tedious. Uh, we think that this is something that machine can do better. Also same as uh, parking layout design, right? So here you can see, now, if you give us the basic uh, land use of this particular project, uh, the grade system, um, your MEP uh, location or, or area, and then with that information, the machine can generate parking layout. And we also internally did, did a lot of competition between man and machine. So most of the time machine can generate one or two uh, extra parking, uh, same parameter, right? Everything, same everything, and then, but much quicker. So this actually uh, provide a lot of value for uh, developers, especially in you know cities like Suzhou or Shanghai, you know first or second tier city, which land is very uh, expensive. Right? This is something we did uh, we do internally. Uh, so this uh, running object we call intelligent agent. So basically each intelligent agent simulate a, uh, a user profile. So I give you an example. This is a project in Hong Kong next to the new airport, uh, 600,000 square meter, which is the largest, uh, uh, they call single, single occupant uh, commercial building in, in Asia, right? So um, with the information we gather from the developer and then also the public uh, data, we can get a lot of uh, knowledge. For example, a 30 years old female from mainland China, a tourist, when she or he come into this building, we know their shopping behavior, right? They, they stop at every boutique store uh, and then they eat at Michelin restaurant. They stay overnight at the nearby hotel because next day they will shop again. Whereas uh, local Hong Kong residents, uh, they have a place to stay and then they come here 
probably not mainly for shopping. So they come here, they'll stay at the major public space and then they'll do an Instagram uh, image and then they will leave. So with all those data, we will simulate uh, different user, how they behave in this uh, space. And then from there, we can give the developer a report of, you know, whether the, the whole floor, you know, we call hold and cut zone, hot zones, and whether they're, uh, if they're all dispersed evenly, and then, or if they're concentrated in one area, I know we know how to um, uh, fix that. And then whether the anchor store is at the, the, the right location, escalator, as elevator. So there's an example the where two escalator there, uh, between them, there's like a 30, 35 or 38 uh, meter distance. So when we did the simulation, we see a lot of code zone. Uh, in between those escalator. So, but when we enter the project is already at the design development stage. So there's not much room for us to, to change uh, significantly. Uh, so we basically, instead of change the structure, we alter the orientation of the escalator so that the, the, the distance between two es escalators shrink to 26 meters. And with that, we run another round of simulation. We see the hot zone and then cold zone are dispersed much more evenly and, and, and rationally. So this is the type of work we work now with a different kind of uh, developer, uh, especially Hong Kong developer, because they're, they're, they're very good at the, uh, running the facility and then they want to re get the data and then retain that, that data. And then so in the future, they know how to optimize um, uh, whether this design stage or operation. Yeah, so you can see a uh, different kind of project, but we basically do the, the, this kind of simulation from exterior to interior. And then basically it's just those three uh, uh, aspects, uh, you know, uh, traffic, site, and then behavior. So with those three dimensions, we look at the building uh, uh, holistically. And then after that, we have this, uh, we call it almost an operation model. So uh, again, traditional way, the operational team, uh, when like maybe over a year or a couple of years, they need to flip uh, stores, right? Like uh, they, they need to change retail to maybe education to food and beverage. But what, how much, what kind of impact, you know, in terms of rent, your like, again, the hot and cold zone, and then your, your, your energy consumption, you don't know in the past. But with this uh, data model uh, developed, you can have that data. And uh, every time they do this kind of flip, we call it flip stores, then they know this, uh, uh, the, you know, the, the, the number behind uh, this kind of uh, move. Uh, another thing is uh, we call digital twins. Um, so in China, we do a lot of projects like this. Um, this is an urban village in Shenzhen. So basically we fly a drone uh, near the, the village and then we gather this point cloud data. So conventional way is uh, uh, and then human using those uh, 2D data and then convert that into a 3D object. But what XCO does is we have algorithm and then we can basically automatic uh, take in that data and then automatically generate uh, this 3D physical model. Uh, and the model is much more accurate than, than the human uh, traditional approach. And then it's much quicker. So when it gets to a larger city of, uh, you know, couple, uh, 100 square kilometers, 80 square kilometer, you know, this is much more uh, advantage. So at the moment, we're also talking to people in Saudi, in, in, in Middle East, because they're doing a lot of giga projects over there. Uh, so this particular approach is very useful uh, in that region as well. Uh, this is a study we did in Ibisu in Japan. Uh, so we're looking at a commercial facade, right? Um, uh, the local university actually want uh, us to do a study of uh, we call uh, passive or more uh, active or, uh, or, or yeah, active uh, retail facade. So for a passive one, we uh, determine what are some of the physical barriers. For example, there's uh, parking that uh, separate uh, the pedestrian sidewalk and, and the building. And then also there's maybe landscape 
uh, there's not enough uh, billboard or com commercial signage, uh, but the more active one was is with a lot of uh, windows that you can see what's going on internally, uh, right? And then there's also uh, 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 this uh, friendly, like, you know, furniture, uh, public furniture, uh, seats, bench. So with those uh, identify, we basically use Google image. So we don't go to the site, we just use Google image and then capture a different image from the, the, the street view. And then we look, let the computer look at each frame of image. And then we can come up with this hot and cold zone map. So the operator and then the developer of the region, they can, they know exactly which pinpoint they can go in to uh, upgrade the commercial or retail uh, facade. I mean, this is just to uh, to see whether the, the facade is more uh, friendly, right, in terms of uh, commercial value. So this approach is a lot more accurate and then compared to traditional way, we don't need people to go on site. Uh, everything is done from a uh, from, from far away uh, remote. Yeah, this is actually the uh, the thing I mentioned earlier. Uh, this is we use for AI plan check. Uh, basically, we upload uh, image uh, to the computer, and then uh, with very standardized typology like residential, we're able to uh, detect a lot of the objects uh, for floor floor uh, a building plan a floor plan, and then we can trigger alerts. And to be honest, uh, when it gets to site plan, it doesn't work as well because on the site plan, there's a lot of uh, uh, different objects or, or variables. So it's very difficult to train machine to detect everything. So we're still working uh, on that, uh, on the master planning level or, or site plan level. But with building floor plan, like, and then also for standardized typology, like residential, actually the machine do a very, really uh, good job in terms of uh, detect the object and the, uh, propose uh, recommendations. So earlier, uh, you can see we did a lot of things from uh, feasibility study to design. And then late, earlier I told you the whole idea of XCO is actually we want to uh, link design to construction and we want to make sure everything not work in silo. So, uh, recently, we're actually looking at how to achieve that, uh, but more particularly in this we call MIC, Modular Integrated Construction. Um, so here you can see, um, again, planning, uh, individual module design, manufacture and assembly, everything are in silos, right? So we want to come up with a platform that basically integrate everything together. So from there, the, all the data can be retained on this platform. We know exactly what is the carbon footprint, the project time and cost, and then we'll have a digital twin which will assist us in future operations. So uh, how we did this? Very similar to the, to the master planning design platform, but this one will have a pool or library of uh, modular uh, building. And this is in component uh, level, in uh, in module level and then in building level. And then from there is just work like a Lego, right? So you basically, the machine will uh, pick different individual module and then combine them together based on the criteria or the, the, the numbers that you put into the system. And then here the master planning and the individual module are synchronized. Meaning if you change the master planning, the individual module dimension will change accordingly. And vice versa, if you change that individual uh, module, the whole master plan change. And then if you change the rules, the underlying rules, everything will change uh, accordingly. So every all everything is uh, synchronized, uh, associated together. So after master planning, you can actually look into uh, individual um, module scale, right? So you can zoom into to that module scale. And then traditional way, uh, there's the issue is that uh, architectural structural MP is also uh, segregated, right? So as architect change the layout, all the discipline need to follow and then do their work. So there's a lot of running in circles. 
here you can see uh, once your module dimension change, your furniture layout change, your fixture change. So your, then your MEP will change accordingly, structural change, and even your facade panels uh, size change. So everything is done in a holistic way. Uh, all the discipline are associated together. So this is much more efficient than the traditional way. And this automatically generated model, uh, we can reach to a level of depth of 450. So basically meaning it's good enough for production. Uh, so on the left, you see the model that we generated from a, uh, for a hotel in Shenzhen. And then on the right is the actually deliver hotel. This was uh, delivered uh, two years ago. Actually, initially it was for the purpose of uh, COVID, uh, but then uh, later on you can see they, they're running it as a, just a normal hotel. And the other uh, issue or pain point of this um, industry is uh, when we do calculation, right? We do uh, 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 cost, sur cost survey or cost estimate. We have to do it at the very last stage of the design process. So when architect finish construction drawing or shop drawing, we start looking at the numbers. But then often, often times when we present that numbers to the developer, they say, no, this doesn't work, it's too expensive. Then what happened? You have to do everything from all over again. So here in, in this approach, again, everything is synchronized. If you change the design, all the we call bill of quantity is updated accordingly, right? So here you can see uh, uh, all the disciplines uh, to individual component level. You can upload the uh, live unit price. You can also upload, uh, if this is linked to your uh, production, you can also upload the inventory in the factories. So you will have a full picture of the cost, uh, delivery time, and then uh, everything, and then as things change, everything is moving uh, dynamically, and then you have a whole picture of, of the project. And then when it gets to uh, assemble, uh, so this is built offsite, right? So when it gets to assemble in the factory, the machine will actually map out the different uh, work sequence. So we know exactly what can be done in parallel, and then what, what kind of tasks are in, in conflict. So this way, it's very uh, efficient that we can map out all the works, and then we know exactly how much time it will take to deliver a project of, you know, for the, for example, this this project is four hundred thousand square meters. So we know exactly how it will be delivered, and then uh, if there's any uh, lag or, or delay in schedule. So the building core was built on site. Uh, but everything else is made uh, offsite in a factory. And you can see everything is just stacked on top of each other very efficiently. This 400,000 square meter hotel was delivered in three and a half months. Uh, so you can see this, the speed. And also the craftsmanship is, uh, is a lot better than traditional way because everything is built in a industrial manufacturer side, right? So, uh, the, the factory rely on a lot of uh, digital production, robotic arm to do things. Uh, so the craft, craftsmanship is uh, exceed, uh, you know, conventional uh, standard. And then this is a uh, finished hotel, the image you can see. So again, I, I go back to the, the biggest advantage of this approach is from design to production, all the data can be retained on this platform. So you can you can track exactly, uh, you know your the the number of iteration of design change, material saving, uh, you know your carbon emission on site, and the traditional way of doing things. And this is what we call AI enhanced uh, modular integrated construction. We can cut the time in half. And here are just some uh, projects that we did uh, around the, uh, the globe. Uh, this is in Japan, uh, in Nagoya, uh, 18 units, uh, uh, almost Airbnb style of uh, uh, complex. So each building is 108 uh, square meters. Is made of, uh, each floor is made of three module and then two connection piece. And then everything is done in a factory in China. We deliver to Japan and then made the final assembly on site.
Uh, this is a project we did in Australia. Uh, this is actually a, a factory near, not too far away here from here is in Changshu. Uh, this uh, villa is made of six uh, container dimension module and it's combined on site. This is at the factory that we, we for every project we do a pre-assembly pre on, on the, in the factory first. And then we disassemble again and then ship to site and then and then make the final assembly again. So the, the video is too long, I'm just not gonna show you that. Yeah. Yeah, student housing in Norway, uh, same, uh, but this is uh, much higher, right? Uh, we can go up to as, as tall as uh, 18 stories. And then lastly, I just want to share with you this. Uh, uh, so in the future, we think at the moment, ex existing architecture workflow is looking at this. So everything uh, is done by human and then use our traditional uh, method and then softwares. Um, what XCO is trying to achieve is at this different stage, we want to inject uh, software or technology that can facilitate uh, designs, right? To free up architect from this the everyday mundane uh, tedious work, and then they can focus more on 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 the creative side. And then lastly, I just want to share a something our CEO. Uh, why you always say. Uh, you know, people a lot of time uh, for the architectural um, student or, or work professional, they're afraid of this uh, technology change. But then you can think about when car first introduced to this world, right? With the human are not thinking, say, oh, let's compete against car, who runs faster, right? We, 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 what we're trying to do is we want to uh, improve our driving skill and then make sure that we use the technology better for our own advantage. So same with AI, I think in this profession, you know, uh, I think we should embrace AI technology. And then from there, uh, we can see how to achieve uh, better design and then more make more creative work. Um, yeah, and then that's the end of my presentation. And thank you once again, and feel free if you have any questions, yeah. <laughs> Neil has a question. <laughs> Just, uh, I think we can take one question and then perhaps during the net, not not networking, uh, during the tea break, if if there are any more questions, please feel free to go to Charles. I actually have two questions, so I'll leave one out. Um, yes, I guess yes. certainly the, the you provide a tool that you know really helps to develop a um understand construction things all that. It surely the logic of this is you could become a developer. Doesn't that seem to be the obvious thing with the art? You now change the role of the architect and become a developer. Rather than providing a tool which is so simple for them to use, you could actually do the stuff yourself. Is that something you consider? Neil actually spell our all our business plan. <laughs> yeah, in the, I say in the entire 10 years, this could be a possibility. Uh, we call it AI developer, right? To make everything more efficient. And then with the data retained, we can always do things better, much quicker. Uh, less cost, uh, better quality, for sure. Yeah, just, the thing is that architects are, sorry, architects are the bottom of this, of this B scale, right? Uh, actually, there was a research that was done that showed that the person at the top will make the most out of it per hour with the person selling the thing. So you should sell it as well. You know, <laughs> then actually, the architect was right at the very bottom. Who did that? <laughs> <laughs>
for the team. And, um, you know, maybe as we were innovate, not just to make things more efficient, because what you're actually doing is you're providing a lot of promises in terms of other people can make more money if they use your services. But can we also maybe improve things? Anything? What makes better for me than that? Except for efficiency. Yeah, I think one of the example I show you in Chengdu, that museum, uh, I think AI can use greatly in sustainability, right? Where we're trying to provide a more sustainable design. Traditionally, architect could not convince client, you know, why such design is the most sustainable in every aspect, right? You can say, from my experience point of view, I provide you or propose you a good design, but how do you prove that? Right, and then if you put it into a, a certain system, say Ecotech, and then it gave you all kind of uh, assessment, but how do you implement that back into your work? Once you implemented those data, you change the design, you don't know whether that design is ideal or not ideal again. So again, as I said, the architect is looking at things very, um, I, I should say like very segregated, like from other, I mean, this, is, this is not just to architect, but also to other professionals as well. So what we're trying to achieve is we have a platform that can integrate everything together. So when architect is thinking about design, you can also think about cost. You, I mean, you have also you have the feedback about cost delivery because you're you're in a real world. Your clients demand is real. Uh, it's not just that you just focus on design and then you don't think of everything else. Uh, simply, it's just not that the case, right? Okay. 